second round is a easier round. Um, so we we're supposed to do 3, 4, 7, 12, 13, 18, 23, 26. Not that bad. All right, so the first question is when will the absolute value? So let me start again. Okay. Um, a, it's a less than sign. There's, we don't have to simplify anything. Uh, there's nothing to do. Um, right? We don't have to divide by anything or subtract anything. So we can start asking ourselves when is the absolute value? So when is what? The absolute value of what number? So forget what's inside for a second. Forget what's inside. Just ask yourself the absolute value of what numbers would be less or equal to 18. So the two numbers in question would be 18, negative 18. If I take the absolute value of any number between these two, and for the record, this is going to be an AND problem, right? Because it has to be. You can't say you can take the absolute value of anything under 18. Now, you can't say that. Because if I take the absolute value of a number here, Let's say negative 35, it's not going to work, right? Because think about it. Just I want you to think about this for a sec, <clears throat> right? So I'm going to take the 6n out of there. So just think about this. Focus on this. What numbers, what values can I put in here? So right now, the values that can I, I can put in there is any number between 18, including 18, inclusive, and negative 18. If I take the absolute value of 18, that works. Absolute value of 17, any number. But if I take the absolute value of 19, that doesn't work. The absolute value over negative 18 or less than negative 18 also can work. So that's what's going to help me. And again, that's not your answer. This is just help me understand the problem. So <clears throat> we got to find the values of n. Now, what can I replace the n with? And that's what we're looking for. What can I replace the uh, n with? So. <coughs> Because this is a and remember, so understand that this is going to be an and problem. We can set up a problem and limit and as a compound inequality and write negative 18. It's going to be less or equal to n. Like n, which is going to be less or equal to 18. Right? And where is this coming from? It's coming from right here, guys. Right? That's why I do that in the beginning, because it helps me. So sorry, that should be 6n. All right, so I'm gonna. So now, right now, I'm looking for values of n that I can replace, right? Variable. So we're gonna divide by six, divide by six, and divide by six because, likewise, I want to isolate my variables. So it's gonna give me negative three, less than n, less than three. So in order to make this inequality true, I can pick any number. I'm gonna draw a number line for that. From negative three. To three inclusive. So let's pick, I don't know, zero is here. Let's pick one, I can pick two, right? Let's pick zero. If I pick zero and plug it in here, I get six times zero. Is six times zero is zero? Is that less or equal to 18? Yeah. So again, any number 2.99, one, zero, negative one, negative two. So any value between negative three and three works. Now, just because you don't believe me, pick 4, all right, so let's pick 4, which is a number outside this parameter, right? 6 times 4 is 24, absolute value of 24 is 24, and 24 is not less or equal to 18. And guess what? I wasn't even supposed to do this problem. But hopefully, you listened to a little bit of it. So that would be the answer to this question. So n, okay, so each, so we want n, n has to be a value between negative 3 and positive 3. Well, let's do the problem that I'm supposed to be doing. Jeez. n minus 2 is less than 8. So again, let's, draw, let's try to understand this. So again, I'm going to draw this without anything inside. And I want to think of, of the numbers that I can put in here. Okay. So in order for something to be less than 8, it's a less than, right? So when it's a less than problem, you're going to have something like this. It's going to be between be, let me make this. So any value between eight and negative eight will make this inequality true. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, up to negative seven point blah blah blah, with exception of negative eight. Very close. 
As close as you can to negative eight without being negative. Take the absolute value of that, it works. Negative, absolute value of negative six. That works because it's six and six is less than eight. So all those work. Understand it. Once you understand that, now we gotta go and figure out what can I switch the what value can I put in M so that whenever whatever calculations I do here, it ends up being a number between negative eight and eight. Right? So can I put 10, for example? 10 minus 2 is 8, right? And 8 is not less than 8. So 10 is not a number that I can use. Okay, so we want to find values in it. So let's, again, that's going to be a compound, right? So we're going to set its negative 8 less than m minus 2, less than 8, right? Because we want to find. So our m, our value for m is going to be, that's our setup. So plus 2 on each side, we're going to get negative 6 less than m less than 10. So we find we have our answer for number 3. The value for m, we're going to graph it. So if you pick any number from negative 6 to 10, not inclusive, right? That's why my circles are open. If you pick any number from negative 6 to 10 and you plug it in here for m, it's going to work. Again, I like zero because zero is the easiest, right? Zero is somewhere in here. So zero minus two is negative two. Absolute value of negative two is two, and is that less than eight? It works. So again, you can keep trying, plug in numbers. Okay, guys, take a couple moments, right? And then take some numbers outside, greater than 10 and less than negative six. Pick 11, pick 12, see if it works. Let's pick 12. 12 minus two is 10. Take the absolute value of 10, and it's 10. Is 10 less than 8? It doesn't work. So numbers here don't work. Numbers here also don't work. But the answer I'm looking for, okay, so what values of m will make this possible? Any number between negative 6 and 10, not inclusive. <laughs> 4, right? So, again, ignore what's inside for a second. Let's just focus on this. What are all the numbers that I can put in here so that it's so that when I take the absolute value it's less or equal to 10? Well, and again it's a less than, so you know it's going to be something like this. What are those two numbers? Well, one's going to be 10 and the other one's going to be negative 10. Oh, in this case, I'm sorry, I can shade it. So I'm not solving the problem, I'm just understanding. I understand that I want to take the absolute value of a number so that it's equal or less to 10. Well, if I pick any number between these two, including negative 10 and 10, it makes that true. I can pick negative 10, I can pick 9, I can pick negative 7.65. Take the absolute value of all these three numbers and see if it's less or equal to 10. They all work. But the moment I pick like negative 11, it's not going to work. If I pick 11, it's not going to work. So right now, that's what it means. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay? Now, the problem says 5x is less or equal to 10. So now it changes a little bit because I'm looking for all the values that I can replace. So 5 times, multiply 5 times all the numbers that will allow me to be less or equal to 10. Well, in order to do that, again, this is an AND problem. So we're going to do negative 10. Less or equal to 5x, less or equal to 10. Divide everything by 5, and we're going to get negative 2, less than x, less than 2. So now the values that will make this happen, right, because x, we're going to replace x with whatever number, has to be any number from negative 2 all the way to 2 inclusive, and that's why we shade it. So if you pick, and there are an infinite number of millions between negative 2 and 2, put any number in there, in here, change it for 5, multiply it by 5, and you're going to get a number that's less or equal to 10. Okay? I'm hoping this is making more sense. 7. All right, so here we have 7. So again, focus. We have to, again... We can want to get rid of that r minus 3 here, right? So I don't want absolute, I just want the absolute value. I don't want any times anything, minus anything. So let me do plus 3 here. 
and plus 3 here. So we're going to get the absolute value of r is greater than 2. Oh my god. Okay, so this is a greater, right? So it's a greater than problem. So we're going to write r. So let's understand. Let me graph this. Let's understand the problem. When is the absolute value of something greater than 2? Right? So, when is the absolute value of any number? Can you take the absolute value so it has to be greater than 2? This is an OR problem. So, negative 2 and 2, a circle here, a circle here. Let's talk about the one on the right. So, numbers that are greater than 2 will make that inequality 2. So, if I pick any number after 2, it's going to be greater than 2. The absolute value is going to be greater than 2. So, 2.1, 2.2. So, I can take the absolute value of this and that will be greater than 2. And then likewise, on the left side, okay, I can take the absolute value of any number less than negative 2. So I'm gonna, let's say negative 2.0034. If I take the absolute value of that, will that be greater than 2? Yeah. So this is an OR problem. Okay. So as a matter of fact, we're done because there's only R inside. So this is the easier problem. So value of, of r, that's going to make me true. So r can be a number greater than 2, okay? Or r can be a number less than negative 2, <coughs> okay? But it can't be any numbers between these two. Uh, where am I? 12. I think it's 12. So let's do 12. Oh, I got one. So on 12, likewise, I'm going to get rid of that minus 6. I'm going to do plus 6 on both sides. Oh, my. Where the fuck am I? Where am I? So 6 minus 6 goes away. I'm left over with absolute value of v plus 5. And then less than, and negative 5 plus 6 is 1. Okay, so this is a less than problem. So, I don't know if we want to. So, I know it's an and problem. Okay. So, I focus on this. When is the absolute value of something less than zero? What numbers can you take the absolute value of? And be less than one, sorry, less than one. So, just draw your little graph so that you understand. We're talking about these numbers. Here's one, and here's negative one. If I take the absolute value of any number that's between those two points, negative one and one, it will make that inequality true. Any number. And not including 1, and not including negative 1. So 0 0.99999 and under, all the way to negative 0 0.99999999. That works. Okay? So we're going to set our, so now that we know that it's an end problem, we got to figure out what values of V, what can I, what value can I give V so I can add to 5 to get me a number that's going to be less than 1 when I take the absolute value. Because that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for values of v. So to set up an equality, we use this, right? We're going to use this as our guide here. That tells us how to set up our inequality. So we're going to go negative 1, less than v plus 5, less than 1. So that's our setup. It's a compound inequality, right? An and problem. So minus 5, minus 5. Minus 5. So here we get negative 6, here we just get v, and here we get negative 4. So v, our variable, the value of our variable we can replace here, so let me just graph that, it has to be any number between negative 6 and negative 4, not inclusive. So when I get to this problem here, v plus 5, so if I take negative 5, right, negative 5 is here, Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is less than 1. That works. But try negative 5.2. Negative 5.2 plus 5 is going to give me 0 0.2 negative. Take the absolute value of that, and you get 0 0.2. Is that less than 1? Yes. So, again, I beg you, you know, just for today maybe, play with some of these numbers. Pick a number. Pick numbers between negative 6 and negative 4. Plug it in there for V. See if it works. 
and then likewise take a moment and pick a number just above four negative four uh, negative sorry negative 3.999 plug it in there I'll do it 3.99 let's add that to four to five okay so Oh, Houston, we have an issue. All right, so that's not going to, okay, so 3.99 is outside. So 3.99 is going to give you negative 1.01, .01, right? Less than 1. We're going to take the absolute value of that, and it's 1.01. .01. Is that less than 1? No. So numbers here, okay, here don't work, and numbers here also don't work. They have to be between negative 6 and negative 4, okay? Those are the only numbers that when I replace, those are only values of x, which we can plug in there that will work. Okay? So our answer is x has to be between negative 4, sorry, and negative 6. That's our answer right here. So any value of x, oh, sorry, x, not x, v, any value of v, right? So you know here, so to keep this inequality true, we can only pick numbers from negative six to negative four. No idea what that was. Twelve. Now it's fourteen. Okay, fourteen. Likewise, is set and ready for us to do. There's no adding or multiplying, or dividing both sides by anything. It's the absolute value of something is less than twenty-four. So again, absolute value of something is less or equal to twenty-four. What numbers fit in here? 24 works, 23 works, 22 works, 21 works, dot, 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 dot. Zero works, negative one works, continue, negative 23 works, negative 20 works. So any number, so again, let me try that in another one. If I take the absolute value of any number between negative 24, 24, and then again, this is an and problem. So you're going to have from here to here. That's what it means. It's from here to here. So negative 24 all the way to 24. Shade, because this is inclusive. Right, so that will make this inequality true. Okay, so now let's go to the problem. So somehow we gotta multiply, we gotta multiply x, our variable, times 9 plus 6, and it has to equal a number that is 24 all the way to negative 24. So what so now I'm asking myself, what values of x can I use? And then problems of compound inequality. That's how we're going to set it up. So we don't equal seven. So we have to get rid of the six and the nine. We're going to do minus six. And we're going to get negative thirty less or equal to nine x less or equal to. Oops, no. Oh, that's plus twenty-four. Sorry. And then uh, plus eighteen. Now we're going to divide everything by 9. Divide by 9, divide by 9, divide by 9. So the values of x that I can use to substitute, 18 divided by 9 is 2. And negative 30 divided by 9 is just negative 30 by 9 by 9. Or I'm going to use um, negative 3, right? And 3 over 9, negative 3 and 1 third. <coughs> 3 times 27, 3. Three and one third. Okay, I just want to like it better that way. Okay, so I can. So let me graph that, and you make sure you want to graph that, right? So you, they you, they give you a number line. So, so I'm gonna pick any number from negative three and one third all the way to two, including two, and negative three and one third, right? Because there's an equal sign. So this are all the values of x that I can use. So any value here, I can plug it in here and add it, multiply by 9, and add it 6. It's going to give me a number less or equal to 24. Again, let's pick 1. Well, 9 times 1 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. Is 15, absolute value of 15, less or equal to 24? Yeah. Let's pick negative 3. 9 times, so it gets 6 plus 9 times negative 3. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Negative 27 plus 6 is negative 21. Absolute value of negative 21 is 21. Is that less or equal to 24? Yes. 
So I pick a couple of values inside there to make sure my answer works. Now, if you like, go crazy, okay? Go crazy and pick some numbers outside that parameter. Pick three positive. Well, if I pick three positive, just to prove that it doesn't work, right? we got six plus nine times three. Well, six, nine times three is uh, 27. 27, six is 33. Absolute value is 33 is 33. Is that less or equal to 24? No. So three doesn't work. And likewise, if you want to pick negative four or negative, pick negative three and a half, because right? Because that's to the left of negative one third, third, negative three and one third. So pick numbers to the left and plug it in for your value of x. See if it works. You'll find out that it does. <coughs> no idea what that number was. It was 14, and guess what? We were not supposed to do 14. You were not supposed to do 14. Okay, so you're getting bonus questions. Jeez. <sighs> My apologies, guys. Okay, where are we? Yeah. Number 18. That one I have to do. So I'm going to please I have to catch you doing distributed property again. Seriously, guys. Minus 10, minus 10. Right? So we're going to have 9 absolute value x plus 8. Less than 45. Right? Now I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And what we want is absolute value x plus 8 less than 5. Finally, we have a problem. So all that, I got rid of the 10, I got rid of the 9. So now I'm ready to start my problem. So again, let me put it over here. Without, I'm leaving the, I'm taking the x plus 8 out of the problem for now. I'm just going to focus on this. So again, it's an and problem. So right away, I can even draw this if you like. And I know it's going to be something like this. Right? I can even draw it. I want the absolute value of numbers that I can that are gonna be less than five. So it's gonna be anything between these two numbers. Right? That's the absolute value of negative four, negative three, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, up to but not including negative five. We'll make this inequality true. That's what I want you to understand. Now, what we have to find is the values for x that will make that true. What can I plug in for x? Can I put 100? Can x be 25? Can x be negative 29? Can x be 3.75? I need to find the values of x. So, it's an n problem. It's in the compound. So, I'm going to use this right here to help me set up my inequality. And here's my inequality. I'm going to take negative 5, less than, and in the middle, I'm going to put x plus 8. Less than 5. Here's my compound inequality. So we're going to isolate x, so we're going to do minus 8, minus 8. So we get negative 13, less than x, less than negative 3. So that tells me that the values of x that I can take and plug it in here, if I pick any number from negative 13 to negative 3, not inclusive, this will work. So if I pick negative 2, if I pick negative 2 over here, negative 2 plus 5, sorry, negative 2 plus 8, no, negative 2 is on this side, right? So negative 2 is over here, so it's, it's an example of what's not going to work. So if I put negative 2 over there, I get negative 2 plus 8, which is 6. And if I take the absolute value of 6, I get 6, which is less than 5. So negative 2 doesn't work. So let's pick a number inside between negative 13 and negative 3. Let's pick, I don't know, let's pick negative 5. So I get negative 5 plus 8. Negative 5 plus 8 is negative 3. Sorry, got that. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. I'm sorry. Okay. An absolute value of 3 is just 3, and it's 3 less than 5. Yes, it is. So again, you out of time, and one of your TV shows are on, play some numbers. Right, find some numbers that work. So our answer is this. Our answer is this. Right? X has to be a number between negative 13 and negative 3, not including negative 13. 23 
Thank you. All right, so 23. Again, what do we have to do first? We gotta get rid of that eight and get rid of that four there, right? So let's do minus eight on both sides. We get four absolute value of six minus two a. That's already equal to uh, 16. Divide this side by four, divide this side by four. My God, I wish we had more or problems. I apologize. So uh, divide both sides by four, the four goes away. So I'm left over with six minus two a less or equal to four. And that's what I want to focus on. So let me drag this to the side. I'm just going to draw this with nothing inside. What can I take the absolute value of so that it's equal or less to four? Yeah. Every single number between, this is an end problem, right? You can even really draw it like that. Draw this, I'm even going to shade it. I just need to two numbers, two extremities. So it can be four and negative four. So any number between four and negative four, if I take the absolute value of, it's going to be less than equal to four, right? So that, that's, that's what this is talking about. Now let's get to the solving part. The solving part says, Okay, now figure out all the values of a, all the values of a that will make that true. So can a be 100? Can a be negative 29.5? Well, give me the values of a that I can plug it in there. Well, it's a compound inequality, right? Because it's an and problem. So we have 6 minus 2a, and we're going to put it between 4 and negative 4. Right? That's my setup. Well, we're going to do minus 6, right? Let's get a 6 first, minus 6. We're going to get negative 10, less or equal to negative 2a, less or equal to negative 2. Now we're going to divide everything by negative 2. Negative 2, let's divide by negative 2, think about it by negative 2. Because we divide by a negative number, everything is going to go the other way now. Negative two. Okay. So our inequality here. Okay. So uh, the values of a that I can plug it in. So if we draw this. Okay. So a has to be a number between five. And five. Yeah. Inclusive. So again, let's pick a value. All right, so here's my inequality. 6 minus 2a has to be less or equal to 4, right? So let's pick let's pick 3. Actually, you know what? Let's pick, yeah, let's pick 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Is 0 less or equal to 4? Yeah. Let's pick 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. Is 4 less or equal to 4? Yeah. So that 4 is work. Let me pick 0. If I pick 0, 2 times 0 is 0. 6 minus 0 is 6, and 6 less or equal to 4? No. So again, numbers, and I just, numbers over here, don't work, don't work, don't work, don't work. And again, likewise, numbers to the right of 5 will not work, won't work. So let me pick 7. 2 times 7 is 14, so 6 minus 14 is negative 8. Negative 8, absolute value is 8, and is 8 less or equal to 4? No. So again, play around and see if those numbers work. So, but, for the values of a that will make this inequality true, I can pick any number from between 1 and 5 inclusive, plug it in here, multiply by 2, and then do 6 minus whatever that product was, and it will give me an answer that won't work. No idea what number that was. 23? Yeah, one more. Alright, so one more is over here. Let's get rid of that 9, let's get rid of that minus 3, so we'll do plus 3 on both sides. We get 9, absolute value 1 plus 8 and greater or equal to 81. Then divide both sides by 9, divide this by 9, divide this by 9, and we finally get what we want, which is absolute value 1 plus 8n is greater than 9. Oh, finally a greater than 9. So right away, I know this is going to be an or problem. Okay, so what can I take the absolute value of so that it's greater to 9? So even my graph right now, I already know how to set it up. So 
here's 9 and negative 9, two circles, but guess what? Instead of pointing towards each other, now they're going to point that way. That's an OR problem. So in order to, and I think about this for a second, let me empty it out. What's the absolute value? What, what numbers can I take the absolute value of so that it's greater than 9? Well, if I take 9.1, will this work? Yeah. 9.2, 9.000001, will it work? They all work. 10, 11, 12. But the moment I pick a number that's in here, between negative 9 and 9, let's pick uh, 7. That's not going to work. Let's pick negative 8.5. That's not going to work. All right, so any numbering in here, in this space here, doesn't work. So, so again, understand what we need. That's what we need. Okay, we need our numbers to be between those two. Not between the two. Uh, be greater than 9 or less than 9. Right? So when I set the problem, so now I want to find n, right? What values of n can I use? What can I substitute n with? So that's what we're looking for. So it's an OR problem. This one, we're going to set the inequality and solve it separately. So we're going to have 1 plus 8n, and that has to be greater than 9, right? It has to be greater than 9. Or 1 plus 8n has to be what? Less than negative 9. Those are the two conditions. Minus 1, minus 1. 8n is greater than 8. Divide both sides by 8. So one of the conditions is that n has to be greater than 1. The other one, uh, minus 1, minus 1, 8n is less than negative 10, divide both sides by 8, and n equals negative 5 over 4, or n equals less than negative uh, 1.25, less. So this is an OR problem. So when I graph this, right, so I'm going to put 1 over here negative 1.25 or 1 and 4, put a circle. So n has to be greater than 1 or less than 1. So if I pick any number greater than 1, not including 1, it works. I go back to my inequality, right? my inequality, and I write the inequality over here. 1 plus 8n greater than 9. So here's my inequality. So what can I replace this variable with, right, that n with? I can replace that with any number that's greater than 1, and it will work, or any one number that's less than negative 1.25. Nothing in between. So if I pick 0 or 0 0.99, negative 1, or anything between these two circles, it's not going to work. Let's pick 0, for example. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Is 1 greater than 9? No, it doesn't work. Let's pick, um, I don't know, a number greater than 1. Let's pick 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17, and obviously that's greater than 9. Okay, I am really hoping that this helped. Right. So 